these are some new batteries that need to go into my UPS unit that powers my home network, servers and wireless and modems and router and stuff like that because the ones that are currently in it are coming to the end of their life no thanks to how it's stored which is currently in an airing cupboard above the hot water tank and it gets very warm in there and we've had a lot of hot weather and finally now there's alarms going off on the unit for the batteries to be changed so I had to go and travel to pick some of these up because it went on a weekend of all the times when I couldn't get any delivered anyway let's go and have a look okay so this is the unit it's a smart UPS 750 made by APC you can see the red light on it there it's not beeping at the moment but it does do and I need to shut everything down that's connected to this unit then we can change it out but I can't have it down for long so I'm gonna have to replace it with something else okay so my solution to put things back online and keep it running whilst I do this battery change is I've got a, U a bigger UPS this is a 1500 that drives my uh, main computer system and a couple of other things in here and I've basically just gone and got this extension lead and plugged it in to the output then I'm going to run this out to the cupboard where the other UPS was plug in the power cable from it and then I've got this sort of extension lead splitter that's got the IEC connectors that the back of the UPS unit would have so this will enable me to run everything from this battery unit whilst I've got the other one offline so I'm going to go ahead and uh, run these where they need to go and do that okay. so everything's now offline as you can see it's in the load so we can turn this off and quickly change it out okay so all of the uh, plugs are switched over we're running on a battery so I've actually got the UPS out and I've plugged it in again as you can see here i connected USB to it and I got the software up and running on my laptop this is the PowerShoot uh, software that's used to manage these UPS units and something that's quite interesting is that but it's not showing the battery error anymore so that's quite interesting uh, I thought the batteries in this unit were about a year old but it seems they're actually older than that you can see the UPS itself was made 27th of November 2007 so it's quite an old unit but the battery replaced date is set to the 11th of February 2015 so I've actually had these for two years now two and a bit almost two and a half years if I go to UPS status it is all online and up healthy internal temperature 39.6 degrees C 250 volts AC out 250 volts AC in 50 hertz there's zero load on it because there's nothing plugged in obviously and uh, let's look at battery status and it states the batteries are normal there's 27.13 volts DC on them and it estimates 158 minutes of runtime remaining so I do remember setting this date when I last changed the batteries so that's definitely the date they were changed I think it might be worth running this thing down with a load on it completely flat and recalibrating the batteries now how you recalibrate them is you get uh, something like a light uh, halogen lights lots of people use for them that's probably a bit much for this but something like normal light bulbs and put them on it and just run it down from a full charge all the way down to completely flat where it switches itself off that's how these units calibrate so I'll go and find a light bulb and some things to run off it they'll put a constant load on it and uh, we'll see how long it lasts for and then what it thinks of the batteries when it's re-evaluated but I am definitely going to change these batteries out anyway because I bought new ones so I may as well let me go do that okay so uh, I've got the unit hooked up to the computer now and uh, a load ready so I've got here um, just coming out of the back of it on this uh, socket it's not the neatest way of doing this by any stretch of the imagination uh, but this is all I've got to hand at the moment to do it and I need to get it done so it needs must so these are just a load of lamps 
that are connected up onto the unit with sort of 60 watts per bulb or so and uh, I'll basically just turn them on here if I can get my finger into the switch and that loads it up to over halfway with all those on so if I refresh the load you can see here the load is 58.5% that's 1.5 amps now I think this is roughly where it will run sort of 55-65% load so this is what I'm going to calibrate it to um, but I'm going to use, bear in mind these are the old batteries still so the way you calibrate these is you basically when it's like this you just unplug it from the mains so if I go like this with the load on it's now running on battery and we let it run till it's completely dead okay so already that's it it's turned the output off and it's just flashing away that it's dead so that took like oh, maybe three minutes at best so now I'm going to plug it back in and you let it charge up to full again so now we just wait for ages quite frankly just going to turn it on again well off first then back on now that it's charging We'll do some flashing for a while. And then stabilize and we'll leave it to charge. Okay, so I did let it do a self test. Um I was just messing around sort of within the software here. And it's it's fully charged now again, but you can see during the self test it's just completely thank God for that. And obviously as soon as it's kicked in to try and run on battery power, this light's come on and it's just been like, nope, started beeping and it's just cancelled the test. So even though these batteries are charged up again and going, they will not run in this UPS sufficiently, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and shut this thing down to do that. If we can get the front off, but first I'm going to unplug the mains and unplug the battery connector you should always take this out before you're doing any work on the batteries as it disconnects them then we pull the front off with a bit of gentle persuasion ok I've got it to separate so there's the front panel you can see the plungers have already just jumped out because they are um, all cracked there's only half of them left, so they, I mean they're really not much use at all. These plunger things are supposed to fix into here, but they don't. But anyway, let's get this existing battery pack out. Just gonna have to sort of slide it this way, like so. Pull them around. You can see they are the same batteries here as I've now got over there to replace them. There is a, a slight bit of a bulge on the side of them here but not very much. This is why I use this brand of batteries because they don't leak and they don't really cause me any problems. So I need to now get these other batteries and put these connectors and things onto them. And then we can reinsert them into the unit. So I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way and rebuild this battery pack. Okay, so the battery pack is now done. As you can see, I've also labelled them with the date that I put them in. The fuse is connecting the two batteries together. And then the clip is mounted here. 
ready to slide them in. There's the old batteries there. Have a quick look inside the unit. Not much in there really. So let's just slide the battery pack in. Straight in like so. That's butted itself up. All the terminals are on nicely. I'm just going to sort of push this in, not that it's going to stay. And then we'll reconnect the batteries with that connector. And it should come on. Yep. So it's running all that load. And it's operating off the battery. So I'm going to plug the mains in. Whichever way it goes. And that will now trigger it to charge. Okay, I'm going to put that on later on. But let's have a look over on the computer if the status is updated. We've got online. That's all okay. Battery status. Capacity 100%, another 5 minute replay. This needs to be refreshed. 98% charged apparently. So if we let these finish charging, we can then do a rundown and calibration of it. Okay, so it's now actually the next day. And this unit's charged again, it was left charging overnight. And we're ready to run it down with the new batteries in. These are the old batteries here. Uh, we've got the new batteries fully charged up, it just needs calibrating. So as you can see here, I just go on refresh data. You can see, I've also put the battery replace date in here now. We're at 100% battery capacity. So I'm going to unplug the unit from the laptop and get this out of the way. And get ready to calibrate this thing. So to do so, we're basically just going to plug in the load, which is the lights. So those are on. All those over there, these over here. And then we pull the power on it, which I'll pull the plug out. And let it run down. Now, it just is left beeping away here. Eventually, it'll completely die as it did last time. And then we just charge it up again and then it's calibrated. That's the basic rundown of it. You just run the batteries completely flat so that it then records how long it managed to run for. This load that it's under now with like 60-ish percent, it's probably not going to be at that load all the time. The chances are the average load on this thing is going to be around about 40 to 50%, but it may hit as high as 60, which is why I'm calibrating it for a 60% load. Anyway, I'll uh, come back as this does things. Okay, so it's now started beeping more, but as you can see, it's still showing three bars here. This is because it's really not sure. It thinks it's got about half the battery left, but it also thinks it's likely to die. This is why you have to recalibrate these things. So now we've got to listen to this beeping for how heavy, for however long this is going to last. It's only been three minutes up to now. It's now at one light left, which should mean normally that the battery is under, I think it's 25 or 23 percent, something like that. Okay, interestingly, it's been 10 minutes and it's still not died. And actually, the indicator has gone back up. It's now got two bars of battery remaining. So, this is anyone's guess how long this is going to last. <laughs> okay, so in absolute typical style, the second I moved from the room to go to the toilet, it died. So, it lasted a total of 13 minutes with a 60 odd percent load that was on it. So, now all I've got to do is charge this thing up again and it'll be calibrated and it can go back away. Well, not in the cupboard because I don't want the batteries to die again so soon. 
but yeah I'm gonna charge it up and then find somewhere more appropriate to install it when I said somewhere more appropriate I meant it this is installed in a rack cabinet so uh, it's just kind of sat there at the moment at the bottom but nonetheless this is a million times better than as it was before this is actually a, also a sneak peek uh, project I'm currently doing there will be a video on soon which is a complete network redo so this patch bay is a new addition it's all being wired throughout again we've got the the switch here but that's only temporary there's a smart switch coming that's my one UPF sense firewall I built on the channel that's my 2U uh, server on a budget this is a smart switch that's going to be replaced soon we've got a Synology disk station NAS here loaded with lots of terabytes of storage so yeah look out for this video on the channel but if you enjoyed this video on the APC UPS please leave a like down below any questions ask them in the comments and as always subscribe for future technology videos like this one